On January 19, 1995, an X-31 experimental aircraft was making a routine test flight from the NASA Dryden Flight Research Center when the chase pilot suddenly made a series of radio calls. Quote, NASA 1, we have an ejection. We have an ejection. The aircraft is descending over the north base area. I have a chute. The pilot's out of the seat, and the chute is good. Despite the loss of the first prototype, the X-31 program proved to be a successful collaboration between the United States and Germany. In fact, the program was groundbreaking in more ways than one. The only two X-31 models ultimately carried out over 500 flights between 1990 and 1995, providing invaluable information for the design of next-generation, highly maneuverable fighters. Groundbreaking technology. In 1987, American manufacturing conglomerate Rockwell International received the approval of the Pentagon to complete their newest experimental fighter, the X-31. The aircraft was a joint development venture between the American company and West German aerospace manufacturer Messerschmitt Bolkow Blom, which had been working on advanced flights for six years to test the viability of thrust vectoring hardware and software. Thrust vectoring is the ability of a vehicle to manipulate the direction of the thrust from its engine to control its attitude or angular velocity. This technology would rapidly improve flight maneuverability in close air combat, giving the Americans an advantage over the Soviet Union. With this system, the aircraft would be able to execute tight turns and high-angle attacks. In angles of attack, or AOAs, controlled slides are achieved by pointing the aircraft's nose upward while the plane continues in a horizontal line of flight. Before this development, most fighters could only fly at 35 degrees before running the risk of entering into a spin. Upon the announcement of the joint venture, Sam Jacobellis, president of Rockwell's North American Aircraft Unit, stated, quote, I think it's revolutionary. There is considerable interest in the technology. I have a gleam in my eye that in a few years, there could be a small enhanced maneuverability fighter in production. Other than breaking ground with collaboration between the two nations, the program was also the first to be developed under the Nun Quail Research and Development Initiative, which called for greater American and European cooperation in weapons and aeronautics development. The X-31 To build the aircraft, Rockwell and Messerschmitt Bokal Blom divided the funding provided by both governments, with 80% going to the American company. The agreement stated that Rockwell was responsible for the airframe's design and assembly, while MBB provided other significant components. To cut costs and manufacturing time, the design was based on both original parts and pre-existing components of several aircraft, such as the British Aerospace Experimental Airplane Program, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the F-16 XL, the B-22 Osprey, the F-20 Tiger Shark, and the B-1 Lancer. The X-31 had a tailless delta wing, weighed 16,100 pounds with fuel, and had a wingspan of 23.83 feet. The design speed was Mach 0.9, with the capability to reach over 40,000 feet of altitude. However, during tests for thrust vectoring effectiveness, it could reach supersonic speeds at lower altitudes. To control the pitch and yaw, three graphite epoxy composite paddles mounted at the end of the aircraft were used to direct the general electric turbofan engine that produced 16,000 pounds of thrust in the afterburner. The X-31 also had a canard to handle stability and control, which would ultimately allow the aircraft to achieve angle of attack maneuvers beyond the capability of conventional aircraft at the time. Flight Tests The first prototype flew for the first time on October 11, 1990. Along with the second model, X-31-2, they broke many records and established several milestones. During the initial phase of test trials at Rockwell International's California facilities, the pilots achieved thrust vectoring in flight, expanding it to a 40-degree angle of attack. At the request of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the flight operations moved to NASA's Dryden Flight Research Facilities in Edwards Air Force Base in February of 1992. Once in Dryden, the engineers from both companies and a team of international pilots pitted the experimental plane against comparable aircraft without thrust vectoring capabilities to evaluate the X-31's maneuverability in simulated air combat. The X-31s outperformed every aircraft, achieving an outstanding potential kill ratio of 30 to 1. Then, on November 6, 1992, the second prototype achieved controlled flight at an angle of attack of 70 degrees, twice as much as a similarly shaped aircraft could accomplish. And in the spring of the following year, the same model completed a Herbst maneuver, a rapid post-stall 180-degree turn. Loss of first prototype On the morning of January 19, 1995, 
German pilot Karl-Heinz Long began preparations for a flight trial aboard the first X-31 prototype. Long followed all security protocols that would allow him to ease down the runway and into the skies, and he didn't notice anything wrong with the aircraft. However, 43 minutes into the mission, ice began forming on the plane's pilot tube. Incorrect airspeed data information was then sent to the aircraft's flight control computers, the system responsible for reconfiguring the X-31 for lower speeds. The experimental aircraft then started to oscillate uncontrollably, pitching to a 90-degree angle of attack and leaving Long with no choice but to eject as fast as he could. The empty aircraft then crashed near the northern boundary of Edwards Air Force Base, and the resulting injuries ended Carl Heinz Lung's career as a test pilot. Alas, the first X-31 prototype was immediately lost. Investigation On January 13th, six of the highest-ranking collaborators of the X-31 program reunited at the base to discuss the accident and figure out what they could learn from it. The first to speak in the session was Dryden Flight Research Center Director Ken Zalai, who admitted, quote, I was in charge. I cannot blame anyone else. But lessons from that might be applied to current projects. Zalai also remarked that the X-31 team was a highly skilled and experienced international crew, but that errors and accidents often happen, even to the best of them. After a thorough investigation, the six-person panel decided that other factors that further contributed to the ice inside the pilot tube included the replacement of a more common heated pilot tube with an unheated keel probe. In 2005, NASA released a 39-minute film reviewing the events of the 1995 crash titled X-31 Breaking the Chain. According to the feature, the combination of independent errors, like the fact that the accompanying chase pilot could not hear Lung's radio conversation with his base, prompted loss of control when the pilot had to eject to save his life. Footage from the crash showed the aircraft in unusual attitudes as the computer applied the false information to attempt flight control after the pilot's ejection. The investigation board also recommended that all pilots in the program must receive further training in all safety systems, assure that all test team members receive configuration change notices, and that the remaining X-31 should be upgraded with several changes to prevent similar accidents. Despite the loss of the first prototype, the X-31 program was still considered an outstanding success. According to Ken Zalai, quote, Flight research is a difficult environment, and unless you're prepared for situations, sorting out a problem in a few seconds and taking the correct action is unlikely. Failure situations must be practiced in the control room by the control room staff to be prepared and primed to act. The director also assured the X-31 program team that with projects like these, quote, it's things that you would consider routine that cause trouble because there is no such thing as routine flight research. The director then reiterated his belief that complex, high-risk experimental programs can be accomplished safely and successfully. Vector After the loss of the first prototype, the remaining aircraft made an appearance at the Paris Air Show in June of 1995, wowing the crowds with its thrust vectoring capabilities in 21 demonstration flights. In total, the X-31, the first international experimental aircraft development program administered by an American government agency, logged 580 flights and 559 research missions from 1990 to 1995. In 1999, the Vector, or Vectoring Extremely Short Takeoff and Landing Control Tailless Operation Research, began. The new joint venture between NAVAIR, German's Defense Procurement Agency, Boeing's Phantom Work Studio, and the Defense Aviation Safety Program was carried out at the Naval Air Station Patuxent River in Maryland. From 2002 to 2003, the X-31 carried out test flights at extremely short takeoff and landings, starting with a virtual runway at 5,000 foot altitudes to ensure that the aircraft's inertial navigation system would accurately guide the plane with the centimeter accuracy required for on-the-ground landings. The Vector program culminated in the first autonomous landing of a manned aircraft at a high angle of attack in 2003. The data from the program eventually led to the development of the X-47A Pegasus and the X-47B UCAV demonstrators. That spring, the X-31 team was honored with the International Council of Aeronautical Sciences von Karman Award for, quote, over 20 years of successful transatlantic research and development teamwork, producing the first ever international X-plane and significant breakthroughs in thrust vectoring control. After the Vector program's end, the sole surviving X-31 was retired and flown to the Deutsches Museum Flugwerf Schleichheim in Germany, where it remains to this day. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical content, and let us know in the comments below what you think of this experimental aircraft. <laughs>